I'll be testing a new watercolor pigment. It's special edition paint made by Schminke and it's called Random Gray. I tested it on a scrap of paper before I started my owl painting. This is the beautiful bird we'll be painting today. And right away I noticed a couple of things about this paint. It's granulating, which can give us very interesting effects when we're painting. And also when you add water to the pigment, it kind of separates into several different shades. The main shade is gray, but there are also undertones of blue and pink. It's a little hard to see on the camera probably. Maybe you can see it better here in the cup. But the main question will be how it's going to work in a real painting. Besides random gray, I plan on using a couple of other neutral colors, both by Daniel Smith. One is burnt orange and the other one is indigo. I sketched the owl on a piece of watercolor paper. And looking at the reference photo, I think I want to add a warm color to my neutral palette. This is a well-known formula for color palettes. If you have two or three neutrals, it's always good to have an accent color to kind of balance uh, the neutral ones. So the warm color that I will add is lemon yellow. And this will help me to define my focal point, which is the bird, obviously. And it will generally warm up my painting and make it more interesting. In this video you also see my new brush. It's an um, inch and a half angled brush by Princeton. It's synthetic fibers but it's very soft and I tell you I fell in love with it from the moment I started using it because it allows me to cover pretty large surface all at once. It also has that pointy edge and I can paint smaller details with it as well. For the style that I like, the loose watercolor painting, a large brush is essential because obviously if you have a tiny little brush and you trying to make colors run and mix on paper they will start drying on you before you can add other colors so you need to work fairly quickly and a large brush is essential for fast watercolor painting I had a one inch flat brush that you saw in a lot of my paintings but this one and a half inch and the fact that it's angled just made my life as watercolor artist that much easier I highly recommend having something like that if you like to work larger uh, and I actually bought a couple of smaller sizes as well. You will see them in my future paintings. the random gray wash. I'm adding more of this color and my first impression of this paint is that it's not exactly transparent. I would say it's um, semi-transparent and the pigment also doesn't have a lot of intensities. I'm trying to apply it with a really intense layer but I can't really do that so the color doesn't have a lot of depth to it. That's why I'm adding indigo to get much darker and more intense passages. It's also tricky to get that random gray to granulate. I was able to do it in the sample that I painted but on my painting when I tried working on smaller areas with it it did not granulate. So it does have beautiful warm gray color. So I would imagine for landscape painters or somebody who paints a lot of nature big passages like maybe dark waters or rocks or something like that for foreground where you need warm gray uh, that color will work great and of course it will be fairly hard to mix that 
tone from secondary colors you will most likely not get that variation of tone either that unique quality of this pigment it has a lot of subtlety and a lot of variety when you look at it on paper all right this was the first layer for my owl I let it dry. I'm switching to a smaller brush and I'm just going to add the darkest darks and paint all the little details on the bird. It has those um, very interesting feathers. They're white, but the tips are darker. Almost looks like an emperor's sable cape with those little black tips. But I don't want those details to be too dry, too pronounced. So I'm softening with a little bit of water. And as you see, I am using that warm gray on the front of the bird that's closest to us. And I'm switching to indigo, which is a cooler, almost blue-black color in the areas on the sides that are the areas further away from us. I think I also want to darken the branch just a little bit that the bird is sitting on because the bird is casting a shadow on it. Maybe the background can be just a little bit darker. of time working on the bird's face there are a lot of tiny intricate details there i left you the link to this photo in the description under the video if you want to give it a try i just thought that bird was amazing so beautiful and it's a good exercise in using neutral colors not everything has to be super bright and <laughs> rainbow colors even though i love them you know i have a lot of videos of animals that i paint with fantasy colors with just random bright colors but I think working realistically from time to time and trying to actually match the colors that we see in the reference photo could be a good exercise as well. And I see that applying that um, random gray, if I try to apply it intensely with high saturation directly from the well, it becomes pretty much opaque paint. So to get full benefit of this color, if you wanted to add it to your palette, or maybe use it for certain paintings. I think to use it to its best advantage would be to dilute it with water and apply it with a large brush on fairly large surfaces because on details, I don't think it's possible to show its best qualities when it's applied just on small areas. Let me know in comments if special edition colors that um, watercolor manufacturers sometimes produce as something that interests you. If you have experience using those, would you say in general they're good addition to a palette. I know manufacturers always come up with something new for us to try. To tell you the truth, they sometimes make me a little cautious because it feels like we get excited and we buy them, but then we find them kind of hard to use. So that's why I thought this video might be useful and helpful. So let me know your thoughts on this subject. As usual, my finishing touch would be adding back the highlights, all the white details with white ink. This bird has so many, it was very hard to leave them as white paper, even though I tried for the most part. But there are lots of little feathers, little stripes, and all the fluff that the bird has. So I'm bringing them back with my dagger brush with white ink. <laughs> Also did a little touch up with deep indigo ink tense pencil by Durant. Some of the details were so small it was hard to paint them with a brush so color pencil comes to the rescue and here is the final result. An owl painted with special edition schminky random gray and with three other colors from Daniel Smith. Lemon yellow, burnt orange and indigo. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!